Good afternoon, my name is Floor Brouwer, Wageningen Economic Research. Our re work is mainly in the domain of food and water and uh, energy and food and, and climate and, and the food. And a few years ago we noticed internally that there is a topic coming up, the nexus. And we thought we really should dig into this research area. It internally helped us very much to, to work to stronger together. And meanwhile, we, we were developing uh, a Horizon 2020 proposal, and uh, we did not have much of a problem to, to develop the acronym, because at an early stage, we wanted to develop a serious game on the Nexus. So therefore, we came to Symphonexus. Nexus. And the main title is Sustainable Integrated Management for the nexus of water, energy, food, and land, and climate, for a resource-efficient Europe. In the presentation, and, and I should acknowledge that Hector Pollitt will join, so after a couple of minutes, you come to the policy dimension. So that is the real part of the, the work. We want to tell a bit about the nexus concept. Why is it relevant in relation to energy modeling? It is very much about interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary research. We do 12 case studies, 10 of them in Europe. We do a European study and a global study. And we work with partners. So we have a consortium of 25 partners. Some of them are in this room, but we in each case study we develop with water boards in the Netherlands and the ministries we develop a case on the nexus and we argue that a concept of the nexus may help to come to nexus compliant practices that is what our offer eventually and our claim would be and there we I had a couple of discussions with Georgios about this event because my roots is more, more in agriculture and climate modeling. And there is a nice uh, system of model comparison and model improvement. So, uh, Barrett, it might be, uh, you might learn from this. Yeah. So there is ACMIP, an agriculture, a global initiative for agriculture, comparing agricultural models. Com by comparison, you often learn and improve. And I have some examples. And at the end, of course, we want to come to the policy dimension as well. Our concept of the nexus, we, we, we address five sectors of the nexus, water, energy, food, land, and climate. It started very much about water, energy, and food. But I think the, the biotic component, the ecosystem services, the environmental quality is too often overlooked and therefore we certainly addressed the land component and climate cannot be ignored because of the importance of climate change. We have a pretty comprehensive approach where we really are interested in how to achieve the nexus compliant practices so the governance and the policy dimension is very important. So technological in innovations are, are definitely in our analysis, but we, we are serious about social innovations, about learning and groups to improve their decision-making pr process. And eventually we claim this will help resource efficiency in Europe. So our goal, ambition, and expectation is, and we will test that in cases, that through the nexus context, we are able to potentially improve resource efficiency in Europe. And in, in doing so, the nexus is very much to seek for synergies among water, land, food, energy, and climate. When in the past 10 years, the bio-based economy is, of course, uh, was a big motivation for studying the interaction between biomass, food, and energy. I think too much the water part is ignored. And hopefully the concept of the nexus helps to, to introduce the water part. Eventually, 
there is the, the, the steering mechanism, because there could be trade-offs. You will definitely find trade-offs between the sectors in cases. But, of course, policies want to seek for synergies, and there the governance will be very important. And we will very much focus working with stakeholders, be it in regional cases in Europe, in national cases, in a few transboundary cases in Europe. We have a European study and a global study. How to improve resource efficiency? We, we claim that seeking synergies will help and uh, tra uh, uh, overcome trade-offs and exploit synergies. And there then comes the, the, the gaming. We use very advanced modeling. Some examples were made uh, today. The E3ME model, that is definitely part of our five-star models, osmosis, uh, Capri and a few more. These are the best models we claim to support European policy. But we, we were very uh, modest arguing that some, most of these models are not able to fully cover the nexus. And therefore we added system dynamics approaches which will be developed with cases, the 12 cases, and that will be the start of designing a serious game, where there will be a learning process uh, towards the users of the game. They will hopefully learn from the game, and their responses will be introduced in a knowledge, knowledge elicitation engine, and that learning experience from the players will hopefully add on further value on the learning curve. If you want to look at our website and Twitter, that is your most invited. As said, we have seven thematic core models that we use for running a baseline <coughs> scenario where we currently have almost done, are almost done with the SSP2 um, scenario and we will develop with the cases alternative policy scenarios and the image uh, is uh, the Netherlands Environmental Assessment Agency is an integrated assessment tool. Osmosis was explained today. Uh, Potsdam has the, the Magpie land use allocation. And all of these models, in one way or the other, have an energy dimension in it. And then there are, in addition, there are models like, like Capri that was said today, which is very much an agricultural sector model, having a water dimension and uh, an energy sectoral approach. There is the magnet, uh, which is a global uh, macroeconomic model with country-specific detail. And that was the list of thematic models. Now I would like to come to model comparison and model improvement from the, the magnet the ACMIP approach. As said, it, there is an initiative, a global initiative, the Agriculture Model Intercomparison and Improvement Project is fairly dominated by the US, but with strong research contributions from Europe. By the way, there is a European consortium on agricultural modeling comparison, Maxur, and they all address land use and agricultural activities. And of course, these global models differ for various reasons, because the approaches would differ, the, 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 the functional forms, where most of these models very much focus on supply of food, where the demand, of course, is an essential part of the model, but it might be different across the models. So that was done to systematically compare these uh, models. And, uh, that would be a way also to include issues like productivity trends, technology, and consumer demand. And there is just one slide from the, uh, the, the I think it was seven or eight global models that was compared. I think today there was an issue to, to uh, focus on, on price trends. So that is done in the uh, ACMIP approach. And it's uh, for an artificial, an average commodity, 
uh, there was a calculation made. What's, what is the, the, pro, the, the price projection for the coming 20 to 40 years? And of course, some of the models were uh, anticipating uh, an increase of food prices by 20 or 30 percent, while other models may still expect a, a further decline of food prices. But that effort really helped to compare models and to eventually come to uh, better policy support, which I think would be an important drive. And now comes the policy dimension, and that would be in a logic hand with <coughs> Hector. Thank you very much, Flo. Um, yeah, I have to admit, being the, the last bit of the last presentation of the day, I wasn't sure I would get my chance to, to speak. I thought if the other speakers didn't take up all the time, Flo probably would. <laughs> but, um, so that's good. Uh, my background is I'm an economist, um, and I would add to what Flo said, um, economics is a really important part of the nexus as well, because all of these pressures on all the different bits come from economic growth and demographic growth. So um, the bit we add to that is, I think, quite important. Now, in my in my day-to-day -day job, I'm in charge of the Ether-ME macroeconomic model, and I had an idea about putting up some equations on the screen, um, but this late in the day, I thought probably this is not what people want to see, so I, I drew a picture of a cloud and put some words in it instead. Huh? Um, and how to describe this, I think it's, there's two ways of interpreting this, I'll go through both of them. Um, these, are, these are terms that frequently come up in the policy community and um, aims and goals of the policies that we make. To the energy modelling people, um, I s would see this as opportunity. This is new areas where the models can be applied, uh, possibly linked to other tools or extended in some way, but there is potential to, um, to use your tools for some of the analysis in these areas. <coughs> um, but for the policy people, I'd look at it the other way around and say that um, the results of the energy models can have impacts in these in all these policy areas. And this is through the Nexus interactions and this is what we're trying to dig down to in the project. So in Simpho Nexus, there are um, quite a large number of case studies going on at different geographical um, uh, size of dimension, some sub-national, national level or um, regional. And focusing on different bits of the Nexus and crossing into some of these policy areas through the project. But um, we need to be aware that all the changes in the energy system feed in feed into these. So, following on the theme of pictures, um, I just threw up some examples. This is not comprehensive by any means. Well, the last slide wasn't comprehensive either. Um, the lightning bolt is meant to represent the energy, but it's not some uh, climate response. Um, these should all be quite familiar to the energy modelling people. I would I would imagine they come up all the time. Um, but what I wanted to stress on this side, apart from the, the dollar sign in the corner indicating that the economy feeds into all of this, um, the arrows, it's not just between the energy models, it's between all the other bits as well. So the climate change bit and the, the water and the rainfall and the crops and of course deforestation um, potentially being um, very much an own goal in our sustainability um, endeavours. And we have these policy areas, and my last slide about where modelling comes into this, is that's what we're here to talk about today. Um, what is the role of policy in supporting, uh, sorry, the role of modelling in supporting the policy making? Well, my personal view of a nexus is it's about problem shifting. It's, it's about not solving one problem by moving it on to somewhere else. And it's looking at this integrated approach where these different aspects of sustainability are addressed together. Now, Nexus is, in terms of different areas, is about problem shifting. The bit that's sometimes forgotten is the geographical element as well, in that through trade linkages, it is quite possible to reduce pressures in one area just by importing the resources from somewhere else. 
And again, the economic component is quite important here. So we do want to cover that as well. Second point, modeling can identify unintended consequences. Um, yeah, for, for sure. Um, we have seen this in the past, uh, biofuels being uh, quite a clear example. Getting this integrated approach to see the linkages could help with that. Um, now, trade-offs, assessment, assessment of trade-offs floor has already mentioned, it's come up in um, <coughs> other presentations as well. Um, it's very difficult to look at these things without having some kind of quantification of the linkages there, and the modelling tools that we're putting together are attempting to do that. And then, of course, the last one, the catch-all goal, uh, we need to bear in mind the sustainable development goals that should be framing um, all our policy aims. Um, and we're looking at a number of these together and the linkages, again, the modelling can provide that um, and we see the trade-offs from that. But if we want to meet all these goals simultaneously, then we need to have these links. Thank you very much.